put together. <laughs> What's up, everybody? It's your good friend, Lukey. Yep, that's me. I'm bald. I'm still here. And we got experts, you know, we got real panelists. Uh, Danielle, why don't you uh, introduce yourself? Like we have, we're doing a big women's boxing preview, huge card. So I got uh, two notable future Girl. champions. Danielle, who are you? Um, as of right now, um, I'm the WBC silver heavyweight champion, four-time national team champion, 2019 uh, world champion, 20. 18 bronze medalist at world champion uh championship i've done a little bit of boxing so i think i know a little bit about boxing and that's why you're a panelist you have accolades amelia tell the people who you are and what you're doing all that stuff um amelia moore i'm usa boxing's 57 kilogram two-time national champion two-time world's team member um yeah here uh olympic um, alternate for 2020 games and getting ready to uh, go claim my gold and become a full on Olympian coming into this 2024 Paris. Beautiful. So now let's talk about uh, these fights that people are so excited to see. Clarissa Shields, Savannah Marshall, don't just sit there and stare at me. What's going to happen? Let me just sit back and you guys just talk. Well, me and me and Amelia actually, actually talked about this. Um, I want to extensively, <laughs> right? So there, there's two things that 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 kind of uh, are alarming, but also like very exciting for this fight. Like Savannah Marshall doesn't let people finish, so you know you don't have people walking away once the fight's over. Like people leave on stretchers. Um, and Clarissa Shields is a great boxer. She's got great reaction time, but she's never had to deal with someone who as dangerous as Savannah Marshall. Um, it, it, it's exciting, but also like nerve wracking. Cause you know, as much as you like to see people fight, you don't want to see anyone get hurt. Um, and that's like Savannah Marshall possessions, the power to like break people's jaws and occipital bones and cheekbones. And she's pretty dangerous. So this, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I have to second, second that for sure. And that's like. I think what's one of the really exciting things about this card is that um, it's finally getting that opportunity to really showcase women's boxing. So we got some hell of talent coming, coming through on this card. And uh, I mean, like Danielle said, it's like Savannah Marshall's coming with that talent. Clarissa Shields coming with that talent, with those accolades. Um, and I mean, everybody else following underneath the card is, has stature also. So two observations I made um, based off Danielle's uh, description. Savannah Marshall sounds like she's like the boxing version of Sid Vicious when he was in WCW, sending people <laughs> to the stretcher matches. And second off, I watched a video of Savannah Marshall training that like she was basically doing leg presses with her trainer on her chest. And I had never seen someone doing that. And I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but that just stayed with me that her trainer had like 25 pound weights and were on her her legs what is it i don't know the balls of her feet were on his stomach and she was just doing leg presses and i'm like i've never seen that normally you go to a 24-hour fitness and do that so that's that's about my insight right now they're just getting gritty with it and uh decide not to go to a gym <laughs> it looked really cool like it was way more I mean, memorable you know it looks really cool <laughs> stay in the trenches fight like a dog so i mean you know he stay gritty keeps that mentality so what's going to happen in this fight? Like, obviously, like if if it goes to a decision, probably Clarissa wins. If if it doesn't go to a decision, Savannah wins. What is the optics from from a fighter's perspective? Who do you kind of favor or who do you think has more margin of error going into this fight? Well, I mean, watching like Savannah as like I, I never watched her as an amateur, but watching her as a pro. Um, she's really developed a solid pro style. Like she's been in, she trains with Tyson Fury um, and she's in that camp with, you know, the Furies and they, they're like, you know, their motto is knockout. Like, you know, one of the top trainers that Tyson Fury has um, is from Crunk and Crunk preaches and they, they teach knockouts. That's it. You know, there's no only one way to finish a fight and that's with a knockout. Um, and that's how she fights. She brings fights, you know, they don't, I mean, I, here's the thing, like, long story short, if 
Clarissa can make and get through six rounds of boxing or a match with Savannah Marshall, she wins the fight. And that's so much easier said than done. Correct. Because I think the first round, um, just watching Savannah box, um, she's going to give uh, Clarissa all the opportunity. In that first round, people are going to be like, man, Clarissa came out. She looks so good. The second round is when Savannah actually destroys and starts to dismantle the plan that you had put together to defeat her. That's exactly what happens in the second round. And the third round, she starts to deliver hard body shots. Fourth round, she puts them together. If you make it out that fifth round, you're in a good shape. Most people are not going to make it out of the sixth round. Okay, so maybe you should just take over what I do because that's more detailed analysis than I've seen anyone doing leading up to this. Amelia, I'm going to ask you a real straightforward question. Who is meaner, Clarissa Shields or uh, Savannah Marshall? Because sometimes the angrier person just wins a close fight. <laughs> Who's angrier? Um, oh man! So like you watch their, uh, you're you're watching their, um, just their interviews, and I just kind of feel like Savannah Marshall is just. What does she say, Danielle? What did she say? She was like, first I'm gonna outbox you, and then I'm gonna hurt you." So, I just, I mean, when you put it together and it's that cut and dry and simple, I'm like, man, I think I, I think that might be the plan. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's kind of scary in the sense that she never gets emotional, but you can tell mm. that she really wants to hurt you. And those are kind of yeah. like the scariest people in boxing because you're like, why aren't they being rattled? Why isn't emotion mattering? And then if you're in the ring and they're beating you up, you're like, wait, are they going back to they don't have emotion and they don't care what happens here? You know, it's like there's those real calm people. As my grandpa always has said, the quiet people are the ones you got to be afraid of. And Savannah Marshall has some elements of that. Yeah, she's a crazy Absolutely. person. Absolutely. 100 crazy person. Like uh, her nickname is the baby face assassin. And um she looks and I think they should they just call her the cold blooded killer because that's what she is. A girl's cold blooded. Um Clarissa has a chip on her shoulder and always have, even as being and I think that's what keeps her ahead and keeps her on top, is because she doesn't let her current success prevent her from moving forward at all like she acts like she's lost every single fight and I think that's um her driving force and the fact that this is the only defeat that she's ever had I feel like she's going to come to uh this fight to take Savannah's head off clear like like that bothers her people constantly bring it up um and she and and her defense is well you didn't win a gold medal at the Olympics and I'm like you shouldn't even have to have that conversation. You are the gold medalist. Like you won the Olympics twice. Like the accolades that Clarissa has, like Savannah's nowhere near it. Like she's a, Clarissa yeah, shows far outweighs. Yeah, because I was five, you know, against her one junior belt. Like why were you having this discussion? Why why is there a, a this versus that when Clarissa is clearly that? Like the step mm -hmm. up is Clarissa, not Savannah. Savannah's not the step up fight. Clarissa is. So the way that this fight's being portrayed, like Savannah has, should have to step up to Clarissa, but that's not how the story's being told. Like it's even, it's nowhere near even. It shouldn't be not on paper. On paper, if you don't see either one of them, there's no interview, you automatically flip Clarissa. You don't even think about it. You're like, all right, if I'm betting blindly, Clarissa Shields, done. 100%. Okay, let's jump over to the Michaela Mayer uh Bumgardner fight. Obviously I've I've like interacted with Michaela a few times in my life, not like a ton, but like Michaela just feels like a different animal than Alicia. Now, I don't want to be mean about it or anything, but if like let's talk accolades, right? Michaela was an Olympian, and that matters for something, right? I always favor the Olympian. I always favor the pedigree. And really, I think a lot of people are looking at what Bumgardner did in one fight against Terry Harper, who not to be mean, isn't the fastest of foot, isn't the most uh, dynamic fighter. And she kind of walked into some shots. And it, I think that fight maybe um, raised people's expectations of what they're going to see because I think uh, Michaela just fought that fight against, what is it, Maiva Harmaduch, the German cop? Harmaduch. 
Yep. That's that's the type of person that preps you for this type of fight. You know, that's a gritty war. And she didn't that there were plenty of moments for her to lose in that fight. And she chose to win. Like that's a fight where there's questions being asked. Do you want to be in the fight? I'm talking far too much for a host with a panel of experts. How do you how do y'all see this fight going? No, I mean, I would say the same thing. I mean, the the even from the pro fights that Michaela has had leading up to this, I mean, she has gone after every single name that along the pipeline. I mean, you know, everybody in the beginning has to have those, I'm not going to call them, well, feeder fights or build up fights. Um, call them as, developmental. We'll call it, that's good. Yeah. Developmental fights as she's built her record. Um, but, you know, coming to these later fights, all of it, they're all substantial. And, you know, you look at fights like Hamadouche. I mean, the, she's she's a beast. She just keeps coming forward. She doesn't stop. I mean, I've watched her fight in the amateurs, and um, she's got an engine that doesn't quit, and she hits hard. And she's quick, you know. So it's all of these fights are, are extremely legitimate. Michaela has the pedigree. Um, she's going to come with incredible endurance. Coach Al makes sure of that. I mean, he it's just the way he trains. And... You know, with that length, knowing that range, having that tempo and then being able to put it together. I think that that's a it's it's a full it's a full plate for Alicia, where, like you said, they've been putting a lot of weight of the Terry Harper fight. And, you know, everybody everybody needs that opportunity. Not everybody's going to get the opportunity. So, like, good on her for jumping on that fight. And then winning and pulling through because, you know, it's like if the door's half open, go ahead and kick it through. Um, but, I mean, I would agree, too, that's that's a lot of weight, one fight to put up against somebody's, you know, previous eight, you know. So, uh, I don't know how the scales are, are one way or the other, but, I mean, again, on paper, it's Michaela, you know, if I was a betting man. A betting woman. Right. Bet and lady. Yeah, bet and lady. Uh, Danielle, how does uh, Alicia solve the distance issue? Because that feels like that's going to be problem number one. Well, I mean, if she thing with Alicia that I think um, is something that, you know, you can't take away from her is that she she believes she can win this fight. Right. And yeah. she's a bulldog, too. You know, yeah. she's like the thing about it is like, will um Michaela put her down and I I've actually had the opportunity to be in the ring with Michaela and I'm humongous and Michaela is tough um I've also watched you know um Alicia train and Alicia is tough and she hits absolutely hard so the thing about it is she's one it's the same thing it's kind of similar these two fights are very similar but it's just a, bo a boxer pedigree high pedigree very elite zero 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 point percent of like the population will ever get to where these two are. Alicia and and Savannah Marshall are bodies. They're two bodies that are not gonna be able to compete with real boxers. If a real boxer gets hit, now it's a matter of what kind of chin do they have, what kind of grit once you get hit with a solid shot. Like if you let you know, Yeah, but so uh, like Michaela's been tested. Michaela's been rocked. You've actually watched fights where her knees have buckled. She's come down, you know, and had to hold on to her, the shoulder. And she comes back, busted lip, busted eye. Like Michaela is also a dog, which also I think goes underrated. She can box. She will brawl with you. And if you piss her off, she's an absolute crazy person. So I'm not sure if Alicia possesses all three of those. I know that she hits hard. That's one. But does she have the experience? Absolutely not. Does she understand boxing the way that Michaela is going to present boxing that day? Absolutely not. There's nobody that's going to be able to give her that kind of look except for the day of the fight, which is also going to be scary. So imagine, uh, closing the distance, I feel like it's a terrible idea. She needs to learn how to fight from the inside, close the gap quickly, and get out. If she stays in it any more than two punches, Alicia's finished. Yeah, I mean, there's no worse feeling than having a full training camp and going into a fight, I'd assume. And then you see the fighter you're fighting and nothing in training camp felt like what you're doing in the fight. Absolutely. Yeah, you've got all these questions that are being presented and you have no answers whatsoever to be able to, uh, you know, fire back with them. <laughs> I can't imagine what that feels like. 
but yeah I mean you can't you can't just rely on you know like if you know it's yes she is really strong Alicia is incredibly strong but I mean if you know that are you gonna stand in front of her are you gonna are you gonna take that and I mean absolutely not so I mean that's that's one thing it's like if you're coming with just one bullet in the chamber and that's all you got um that's not a good game plan so like I it's I hope that they have other tricks up the sleeve. Well, I mean, to counteract that, sometimes it's good to be one dimensional. And I'll say that, I know that sounds stupid, but at least if you know you're bringing power to the dance, at least you know that's what you're going to live and die by. Sometimes I see fighters that can do a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and they don't really know what their identity is. I think the one positive for both Savannah and Alicia is at least they know their identity is they have to be dynamic and land something big. And I think that's the, the positive to take away if you're in their camp. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But that, I mean, like that would be great if this was like their first fight, these are unifying fights, right? This is everything Mm -hmm. type of fight. So you can't, um, feel like you know like the only like think about it like Tyson just wasn't power he was elusiveness and he was power light on his feet and power so but also great defense and power so I think um, defense to offense is what I think when I think Tyson it's like he's probably one of the best at that real quick on the offense real quick on the defense and something vice versa um you don't see anything like that from Savannah or Alicia Baumgartner there's nothing about them that is a dynamic like the Harper fight, to me, I was like, if she doesn't beat Harper, if she can't be in this division, like point blank, period. To me, Harper was an easy like win at home. She can't take any punches. She's not that great of a build. Um, and then she turns around and she knocks Harper out. The, ex- the expectation was that she would. And Harper was like, fine, I'll just go down in division or go up in division. Whatever the case is, I'm leaving because I know I can't compete because I know bomb grinders hit now. And that was it. She didn't ask, you know, Eddie Hearns for a rematch because she knows. Yeah, Amelia, this is your division. Shoot, with me straight. How do you really look at these fighters? Obviously, you're a little ways away from them, you know, still amateur. But how do you assess them being, like, around your weight? Um, I mean, I mean, pretty much straightforward from, like, what I said before. Uh, Michaela has the pedigree. I mean, I know that I mean, I've been, I've been teammates. I've been training partners with this woman. Um, going to have great endurance, you know, is going to work the jab, is going to stay long, uh, has changed dynamic, you know, to be able to get in there and get dirty and grind, which is a real transition from what she looked like in the amateurs. I mean, you don't <laughs> – because it's such a different pace, you know. You're going to see a lot more long shots in the amateurs than you are uh, going into the pros. Um uh, Alicia, it's without, you know, there's, there's something to be said for that pedigree because you have seen so many looks, you know, you've gone to, there's a year difference in European style. You have to make the adjustment. Um, and you got to learn how to have a bunch of tools in your toolbox to be able to pull out and still be you. Because like you said, you know, even like people who stand behind that power, it's like, you still have to have that foundation of you or you're, you're just all over the place. You're not really, you're not dynamic. You're just kind of, eh. Um, so I feel like there's something to be said about that for being able to have that ability to be able to make adjustments. Um, though I've trained with both of them. I've trained with Alicia. Uh, I've sparred her several times. Um, worked with Michaela more times than I can count. And I think that, you know, Alicia's definitely grown over the last, like, we probably have I've known and worked with her for over the last four years. Um, Definitely Michaela top dog in the division. I mean, she's proven it. Uh, Alicia, definitely a name in the division. I think it's a tall, it's going to be a tall order, but I have, you know, if you're putting in the work, it's going to be a really great fight. If that makes, you know, if that closes it up at all, you know, but she's going to, she has, and I'm sure she has been, and I hope that they've been putting in the work. I think it's what's really exciting about it is 
It's accessible. It's an accessible card that puts women's boxing on the map. It's two exciting matches. There's some really good undercard fights. I don't know what ones you want to touch on. I'm really high on Lauren Price. I think Lauren Price is going to be really, really good if she's moved the right way, uh, mm -hmm. an Olympian. But we also have Ginny Fuchs, uh, which I probably said absolutely horrible. Chris Artenstall. <laughs> Didn't you fight her, Amelia, at some point? Have you ran across her in international competition? Chris from uh... Team Great Britain. I don't believe so. No, I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, Put you she, on the hot seat. Shout out to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think I've fought um, her from Great Britain. If if I'm recalling correctly, um, you know, I've moved down from previous first world championships, 141, 64 kilo uh, Olympic alternate down to 60 kilo and that's 132. So only having recently moved down to the 57, 125 division uh, this past December. So it's just been almost a year. Um, so there's still, as far as like the 25 and lower and, and, you know, people who fought 25 in the amateurs more than likely they're moving even lower down into the pros. So I don't believe so, but um, I mean, Ginny also has a ton of experience. Uh, Lauren Price is exciting. She's a cool person, like really really exciting fighter a lot of energy and moves in a like really a kangaroo explosive and way a yeah Kung Fu like fighter tyson, kangaroo like mike tyson explosive movement but exactly comes with a lot of power so she's going to be exciting to fight and like you said if she's moved correctly um total potential to be a superstar i mean i look at um, Lauren to be someone that could actually fight a Savannah Marshall or a Clarissa Shields at some point if the the weights and everything match up but she's uh, formidable Danielle who on this undercard are you looking at um, or maybe you have ties to well of course Jenny you know um, I'm always going to root for Jenny uh, me and Jimmy are teammates for a couple of years um uh in 2019 um lauren was 165 who won at world so um everybody of course in that uh, world championship gold was all high-fiving and happy to you know to meet and know each other but um lauren price is tough lauren price beat um nunchka who was a silver medalist um to uh clarissa shields what was that uh is that 12 or I don't want nothing. It was the last Olympics, and Nunchka is humongous. Nunch is like what six one, one sixty five, absolutely jack. She's maybe at, like sits at nine percent body fat, and I, I mean, I've sparred her myself. Woman hits like a Mack truck, and Lauren beat her, and not like you know. Uh, and Lauren's short, way shorter than Lauren Nunchka. Nah, Lauren. Is yeah. The and for uh, at 165, she literally could be fighting at either 32 or 25 just based off her height. But her stature is, you know, she's 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 got size as a 160. Yeah. She could be you know, but those she, size. Yeah. <laughs> she's got but power. I, I don't know. Like maybe I mean, I think she could I yeah. think she could actually beat um, Savannah Marshall, actually. Like I think Lauren Price beat Savannah Marshall. No questions asked. But in a few years, like we don't want to get people. So you're saying off the jump, off the rip, off the dribble. Yeah. Savannah Marshall for Lauren Price, Lauren Price would actually be a problem, like a legit problem. And it wouldn't go to decision like Lauren Price would beat Savannah Marshall. OK, I like that. I like I controversy like yeah. and I like people standing on business. You stood on your beliefs. I like that. Yeah, I second that. That's I believe that, too. Well, what I liked about Team Great Britain on the women's team was they were all literally the same height. Like when they had photos, they were all the same height. And then the weights just were different. It was the craziest thing ever. They were all about like five, seven. And it's just like just different types of bodies. They, I mean, a team could fight. Um, they, except for like I remember before, what was it 2008? Damn, the shade's thrown. That team can fight <laughs> except for let me remember this exact person. Yeah. <laughs> Like so, it's like the team was solid, but this one I don't think Lauren uh was on the team. That's why they had a they had this girl on the team. She was a tw it was two twenty eighteen, and she was the only person. I was like, how do you get on the team? Like, who was sick? 
absolutely terrible. She sparred with us. And- <laughs> Uh, is this the one that always yep. threw everyone on the ground? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wrestling. Like, we were doing Tic Tac and, like, she take, your, take your head off. She was absolutely terrible. Man, that's crazy. I've always heard stories about people fighting internationally and then trading some of their clothes with other countries to get some of the gear. And then I won't say who, but one of them traded too much gear and he didn't have any clothes of his own for a photo. And I was like, man, got, got done dirty. I actually never have traded a shirt before. We were trying to bring them to world championships out in um, uh, Turkey, and we just like didn't have any shirts to to trade. Man, you missed out. Update people on your guys' career. Promote yourself. Uh, let's start with uh, D. What are you doing? How are you getting traction as a pro? Like, how can people support you? Like, what's the next move? How are you going to fight for this big belt? Um, well, I mean, I, I've learned, see, the thing about the amateurs is you don't really get to dodge fights. So I've learned as a pro that that is something that can actually happen. So I'm being what I like to call Keith Thurman. You know, when Keith Thurman held the division up for about two years and um, Sean Porter got to a point where he was like, give up the belt or fight, man. Like you can't stall the division. The division needs to grow with or without you. Um, and he did everything he could not to fight Sean Porter, not to give him the belt. So that's where we are right now. Um, and it's a matter of like what the WBC is going to do to make the make the adjustments so this fight can happen. Um, but I'm pretty sure there's going to be like a vacate. Like she's probably going to vacate and we have opponents lined up to have a, a decent match, you know, that'll be approved by the sanction. Um, but yeah, it just sucks right now because at – out of the division stalled okay i'll paraphrase what i heard so you're really talented people don't want to fight you the champion doesn't want to fight you you can't get a fight and you're just kind of stuck in limbo as you're just getting older and you're trying to achieve things in the sport and you can't get a fight well that sucks yep sucks (laughs) okay well that's pretty depressing um (laughs) amelia Tell us about your career. Hopefully it's not nearly as depressing as the situation your <laughs> friend is in. Um, you're in Colorado and stuff, right? Yeah, no, I'm out here in Colorado. Um, we are actually about 10 days out from starting a, the first ever US, USA Boxing International Invitation. So uh, first annual, which is kind of exciting for um, our NGB or National Governing Body. Uh, we were supposed to have a bunch of other countries come in. There was like 20 countries invited. Uh, we have about six here right now or so. Um, COVID makes things a little bit difficult, but China brought a team of like 52. So that's been really fun. Yeah. They, so China didn't get to go to world championships because of their COVID lockdown. So they've been literally traveling the world, just trying to get it in everywhere. So lucky for us, um, they decided to pop in. They're going to be in our tournament. It's going to be held right in Pueblo from the 12th of September through the 15th. So Monday through Friday and finals will be on Friday. Um, So actually Great Britain was supposed to be here and a couple other countries. And there's some, you know, COVID restrictions out out in the UK. So they're unfortunately couldn't come. But uh, we've had really great sparring with China, the Philippines, uh, Azerbaijan. I always pronounce it incorrectly. Azerbaijan. I just had to correct you just to be annoying because you said that. No, thank you. <laughs> um, no, I appreciate it. And uh, Germany's been here. And I think there's another country. Um, so, yeah. So still trying to stay. We, You know, they're just trying to keep us active. Um, going into pretty much a maintenance season right after this, the beginning of this year has been insane. I was basically out of the country for three months, uh, and in three other countries between continental championships, took a bronze there, went to Italy, um, for acclimation and right into Turkey for world championships and had a little bit of time off, uh, got to which is becoming my annual trip down to Danielle's house. You know, it's, it's like my, uh, we become like rats on the wheel just making weight in this hot ass garage that she has um and just train and just on the grind it's one of the best I've it's been like the last three years I go down there and just like whenever I have my downtime to kind of get prepped up again before I head back into camp um and it's one of my favorite trips every year because you know we just 
we live that lifestyle, you know, work, train, work, train, sleep, eat, and, uh, just have, make our own fun. So, um, and the rest of this year prep into get ready for next spring and the Olympic qualification process is from my understanding is going to be slamming, uh, right off the rip into January. So they're kind of making some adjustments, um, and making a different type of qualification process. Cause there used to be like two or three international tournaments to be able to get into the Olympics. And now because of like adjustments that they've seen through COVID um, it's kind of going back to like the WSB world series of boxing, like program. I think it's like going to be more like points based. So we're looking at pretty much six months on the road, uh, fighting monthly. So you can be like a rock star. Hey man, we're going to be, yeah, hair on fire, cruising around the world, just punching people in the face, you know, and having a good time. So, you know, just right now, I think the big thing, I mean, who else gets to say, I mean, we we really have the freaking life. People are like, oh, you know, what do you do? Swim? Like, no, I'm a boxer. And they're like, what? They're like, yeah. I'm like, who else gets to say that? They literally get to punch people from other countries in the face. Like I go all over the world and beat people up. It's great. Um, you know, and like, don't get in trouble for it. People, people applaud. It's great. I mean, you know, I picked the lifestyle, but, um, so yeah, I mean this, it's really been like honing in on this period of time, like really dialing and keying in on things that make this weight management really easy. I'm five, eight, 125 is, is manageable if you do it right, but you got to live the lifestyle. And, you know, D can attest to that. And you are tall as hell. You're strong as hell, low body fat, just like me. And, you know, when you're coming down in weight, it's a lifestyle and you can't trip up because when you trip up, it's uh things start shutting down. So really just using all of this opportunity and getting ready for next year when we start spinning the wheels and just really getting ready for the big, you know, the big show to happen. So it's crazy that that, process is happening this quickly um and you know and we're we're right on track i'm excited d what kind of concept two equipment you got in that garage as a guy with high <laughs> body fat that likes to lift weights and stuff what are the conditioning equipment you got uh maces kettlebells battle ropes we got a spin bike we got a boxing boxing bag you got the row erg um actually you know it's crazy i'll be getting uh i just got approved for that ski erg um uh, oh, let me know i'm about to buy one so let me know if it actually works like i want yeah. one that i don't have to like spend a whole day on 10 minutes get a little blow up and then get done and then of course like millie likes to come in with her sweatsuit on and uh it jump <laughs> a crazy person um but yeah like you know when she comes down we uh i have a pool so we chill by the pool side after we like sweat like monkeys inside of that garage and then of course if my mom is down she like takes care of us and like my mom has adopted millie and now she's a white sister, so <laughs> she's a part mama of d <laughs> but yeah, yeah we, we we walk out of that garage like we just came out of hades like it's it's it's, it's hot as hell like in houston humidity houston heat and then the garage doors are closed like we're going in there and we mean business and we're not coming out until we've met our quota yeah like yeah no i you know is there certain... anything like north carolina because north carolina is my pinnacle of just miserable workout weather like i thought i was gonna die in north carolina it's like phoenix arizona except humid that sounds actually kind of friendly as a guy yeah. getting older and my joints hurting, like that feels friendly. Yeah, no, I mean, oh. don't have any. If you like to not be able to breathe, <laughs> yeah, you know that's a, that's a, breathing is an overrated thing because you actually don't have to think about it to breathe. So the more you think about it, probably you know you're probably doing something wrong. Well, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, no, yeah uh, and then of course, you know, we, we work out in traditional boxing gyms, no AC. Really good, a good workout, work out with the dudes. And we do it like last time I think Millie was here, we were still doing round robins, which are a lot of fun, you know, because for an amateur boxer, you want to be able to switch up your style when you need to and adjust immediately. So having the round robin with the guys, she's able to switch up almost every two rounds with a new boxer. So yeah, um, somebody fresh coming in too. How Just many guys have you guys have both of y'all dropped in your life in you know, sparring? Like oh, give I, give a I, rough number. <laughs> I just posted one. Um, 
I think most of the time it's just shock because they don't really anticipate you being able to hit them that hard. But um, if I think about it off the cuff, maybe like seven. Okay, that's a good number. Amelia, how many you got under your belt? Two, just two. Okay. And, uh, you know, looking, always looking to add to that. But, man, yeah, you got whoever, you are got to go to D's uh instagram and and check out this pose and i've watched that like seven times <laughs> and left <laughs> okay we're gonna we're gonna link to that that needs to go viral i pay for the free version of zoom so they're about to kick me out both of y'all say your social medias real quick for the three people that are listening oh, all right i'll go first all uh, right go ahead hit him yeah my uh instagram handle is chambers one one two two one uh, and mine is at uh, the number one. So one M-O-O-R-E underscore round. Okay, there you go. And I'm Lukey and I'm not going to tell you where my social media is, but thank you to y'all for coming on and being bringing your expertise to the show.